good morning to one and all thank you very much for giving your saturdays to us right so before i start i was reading a quote yesterday which i felt was very important for all of us to understand which says the future belongs to those who believe in the beauty of their dreams very famously said by eleanor roosevelt so a very good morning to all my name is apurva mishra and i am your facilitator for this particular session it's my pleasure and honor to welcome all of you to our webinar series elevate so extra marks elevate is a thought leadership series on education and technology aimed to serve a platform for educationist academician technocrats young achievers and other stakeholders to share their experience and views on developments and trend in the field of education and technology being a leading edtech brand we as extra marks are very very proud of our journey of the last 15 years and thankful to our 15000 plus global schools without whom our journey would not have been this fulfilling where we are at right now so extra marks has revolutionized the way education is be perceived and delivered by custom creating learning solutions for the 21st century through the state of the art technology and empowering teachers with efficient pedagogical methodologies extra marks embarks upon a journey of reinventing approaches towards adaptable equitable and access education to all i feel so grateful that today 5th august is marking our sixth webinar series i still remember the first one when we started and today we are embarking on our sixth one so it's a huge a uh, moment for us where today we will be talking about the topic and i believe all of us will relate to this topic our kids some you know somebody walking us through talking about this so the topic for today is chat gpt is a tipping point transforming the world of learning so as i mentioned it's just the starting of the ai so i'm thrilled you know and i am really you know excited to introduce our exceptional set of panelists who at the forefront have been revolution you know revolutionizing the education in this digital age so allow me to introduce our first panelist archana mankotia ma'am principal at maharani gayatri devi girls school jaipur an accomplished educationist with global recognition exceptional academics and versatile expertise fostering learning excellence adventure and enriched school experience as an innovator and leader we welcome you ma'am and thank you very much for doing elevate series with us Thank you, Apurva. It is my pleasure to be there on your show, and thank you for inviting me and making me part of this August panel. Thank you. We are privileged, ma'am. Thank you very much. Moving on next, we have Mr. Manan Choksi, who is the executive director at Udgam School, Ahmedabad. overseeing 12000 plus students which is a huge number across 10 different schools he utilizes advanced certification and ima expertise to elevate udgam school enhancing teaching quality parent satisfaction and technology integration at its best we welcome you sir to our elevate series I'm a learner like everybody else. Thank you very much, sir, for sharing your idea. We all are lifelong learners throughout, so thank you very much and wonderful welcome to our series. 
Moving ahead, joining us next, we have Arokia Gerald A, principal at Subaya Central School, Tirupur, an educational visionary with seven plus years in IT and nine plus years in education, driving digital transformation, fostering child-centered learning and recognized for transformative efforts, including the Change Maker Award dedicated to 21st century and innovative education. We welcome you, sir, to our sixth Elevate webinar series. Uh, so sorry to say you're on mute right now. You have to unmute. Thank you. Thank you very much for introducing the way I wanted. <laughs> My pleasure, sir. Welcome to this wonderful series we'll be starting off. Moving further, we have Priya Murli Ma'am, Principal at Mahatma Global Gateway Madhura, with overall 27 plus years of experience and CBSC recognition driving holistic growth through dynamic pursuits, or third experiential learning book, promoting enrichment through sports, music, and dynamic activities. So we welcome you, ma'am, to this wonderful Elevate series of ours. Thank you very much. Uh, it, would, it, it would be a wonderful learning experience for us as well. Thank you. Thank you very much, ma'am. Moving ahead, we had Dr. Prerna Mitra, Principal at JD Goenka Lucknow, a recipient of the CBAC Award 2019 for Outstanding Capacity Building Training at JD Goenka Lucknow. We welcome you, ma'am, to the sixth Elevate series. Yeah, good morning. Good morning, everyone. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Extra Marks, and thank you, Apurva, for uh, this introduction. And uh, I'll just uh, uh, start with a short, you know, thought just to for everyone that it's not that we use technology, we actually live technology. So just to start with, thank you so much Absolutely, for the introduction. Yeah. So we have Poonam ma'am also with us. Very good morning, ma'am. Uh, ma'am, you are on mute. Good morning, everyone. Lovely to be with you today. Hmm. Welcome you, ma'am. We, we, we just started. Then we, as ma'am, have just joined at the right point. So Poonam Singh Jamwal, ma'am, is director at Extra Marks Education, who has always believed in the idea of inclusive, intuitive, and holistic tech-enabled learning solution with an immersive approach and measured outcome. We are so grateful to have her as a leader guiding us at every path. So welcome, ma'am, to our sixth Elevate webinar series. Thank you. I'm looking forward to the discussion today. It's quite a hot topic. Absolutely, ma'am. Thank you very much. Last but not the least, we have with us Ekta Anand, ma'am. General Manager, Adoption and Experience Team with Extra Marks Education, Leading Education Expert, conducting impactful teacher training programs nationwide with overall 18 plus years of experience and 18, sorry, 800 plus diverse program delivered so far. So welcome ma'am for this wonderful Elevate series. Thank you so much, Apurva. Good morning, everyone. Thank you for such a warm welcome. It's an honor to be part of this discussion. Looking forward to learning from experts. Absolutely, ma'am. Thank you very much. So without much further ado, I believe all of you have seen the transition and overall from yesteryear starting, we have seen a major shift in how AI has taken a role into our lives. Starting talking about Sophia, watching it on a news channel, to the talk of the town, which is Chat JPT. Let's deep dive into the conversation with our expert panelist, 
to share their ideas and their vision, how AI is changing their world and how they are managing it. So my first question, I like to start with Archana Ma'am itself. My first question, which goes, Ma'am, as school principal, how do you envision incorporating AI and chat GPT into the educational landscape of your school, ma'am? So once again, good morning to everyone. Um, Apurva, you said something about, uh, you started with something about dreams, right? Yes. So I would say I am, a, first of all, a learner principal and I am a dreamer. And I'm not a technology person. But however, as you said, chat GPT is the tipping point. It is uh, there. So technology is here to stay. It is a part of our lives. And technology in education, I would say, started with when the school idea was formed. And it started with technology like chalk and blackboard. And from there we have reached here when we are talking of artificial intelligence. So um, one thing is very clear that it is definitely a part of our lives and it is definitely part of education. There are no two ways about it. So you cannot, we can't even discuss should we have it or should we not. It yes. is there and it is going to be there. Now the idea is how do we incorporate it as the, your question comes, how do I envision it? The technology, AI, will be used by teachers, by students. Teachers for various things, for their personal work, and for teaching methodologies. Students for doing their personal uh, assignments, homework, at the same time, how they learn. Hmm. So everything will involve technology. So my idea of... Um, the school taking over technology is first we really need to work out how do we move ahead with what speed because things are changing so fast. Today, chat GPT is four earlier, it was 3.5 and there's a huge improvement. Yes. So another next two, three months or years, it's again going to change so much. So we need to have a framework how to move forward. We can't be very quick with our children, immediately impose things on them. At the same time, be very cautious of using it for the right thing and using it with caution, with certain regulatory measure, uh, things in place so that we do not go wrong. So I think to begin with, my idea, what I have had meetings with teachers is first, let us gather enough information about AI, chat GPT, and then work towards it, how we incorporate it in these various sections, such as the teachers using it, students using it, and using it in our ERP system and admin and mm -hmm. overall first. So I'm giving a broad framework, how I envision it, that mm -hmm. we cautiously will move ahead, keeping the latest changes, which will keep coming from time to time. Thank you. Absolutely, ma'am. So, ma'am, you mentioned over here that certain uh, regulations we have to keep it across, certain uh, boundaries we have to draw for the students also. So, my question, my next question goes to uh, Manan Choksi, sir. Since he deals with 12,000, the number is very huge. So, which drives me to this question. Uh, sir, how do you feel the learning experience uh, for the students, considering that every student is unique in its own way, right? There are certain students who pick things very quickly and there are certain who takes a lot more time to delve into it. And AI and chat GPT, one or the other way, it boosts creativity if used in the right way. If not you used in the right way, it probably push back as well. So how do you, uh, you know, provide that learning experience to the students? How do you see that? So, the concept of AI is that there is a personalization uh, in education. So, if a person asks that uh, what is the uh, digestive system, then based on his knowledge of the previous grade, the teacher has to explain. So, if a child knows that it is called a food pile, 
then the teacher has to tell it is a hands of fingers yes and, you know so they have to take it one step ahead this ai can do very efficiently and uh, you can say that grade level 3 explain digest your system the point is that how are we going to give technology like hardware to each child in the school who can engage it in a um, effective manner to learn so we have computer lab period but they are like twice a week it's not sufficient to teach to learn about anything then we have a smart board in a class but yes. a smart board is again for everybody so ai offers a lot of personalization grade level um a teaching possibility but that can best be happened at home rather than at school because at school we cannot give devices for long for all so uh, this is one hurdle which is coming to my mind since long i have been debating that how can ai uh, the, the the power of ai uh, is a personalization but unfortunately that requires uh, technology yes teachers do use ai to create lesson plans to create innovative text uh, like questions and um, do that but that is just part utilization of the whole power of ai Mm -hmm. So the power of AI would be if uh, the students are given um, uh, devices in their hand and they are, you know, they get access. But unfortunately, only one percent or two percent of schools in India have the financial resources to give any kind of devices for more than two periods in a week to children. So yeah, so that's the stumbling, like the hurdle. Otherwise, AI is a great tool. So uh, that, as you mentioned, that personalization is also the strength and personalization can also play as a weakness, right, sir? Yes. So when I say personalization, that also brings to uh, Mr. Jaral, sir. So how do you see us? So Mr. Manan has mentioned to us that personalization is a very great advantage. Not all schools are equipped with that sort of, uh, you know, offerings which we have to provide. So what is your take on that, sir? Yes, um, exactly. I also was uh, wanting to talk about this point. Of one of, um, the thing which I like about chat GPT or AI for that uh, matter, for that uh, uh, thing, uh, this personalization, this child-centered nature, you know, of these uh, tools are really wonderful. So, as Sir said, we may not be able to uh, provide the uh, hundred percent infrastructure in all schools and in, in 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 to all children. But then, we need to come up with a plan. We need to uh, come up with a plan of freedom for the children. So, right now, the the mindset of the parents and also some of the teachers are like, you know, um, using gadgets is is not good. Of course, uh, anything too much is not good, but then we need to have a plan. We need to allow children to use technology. Mm -hmm. And in fact, we need to allow teachers also to use technology. And one uh, important thing that we need to understand as educators, that first of all, we need to keep learning. We need to keep learn about these technologies so that we know what is good, what is bad, and what is uh, you know, not acceptable or what is acceptable and how ethically we can use these things so that we can guide our children because we cannot blame children for what they are doing. You know, what they they do, whatever they uh, observe and whatever they uh, whatever happens, you know, around them. That, that is what they always, you know, interested about and that is what they pick up very fast. And uh, but we cannot deny technology to children. That is what uh, is my point. You know, in, in any case, I need to allow children to use for that matter. If it is a mobile phone, if, if a child can afford only a mobile phone, yes, I think you need to allow them to use it, which means the teachers need to give them a framework how to use it, how to convert their academic works into uh, technology so that they keep using it for the uh, positive purposes you know they engage positively with technology i think that could be one solution that we need to always think about instead of you know always trying to find fault with children because we are not thinking like 21st century children yes. we we think like 20th century old guys so that is one <laughs> uh, one thing that we need to actually uh, you know change uh, in our attitude that, that's what i would say 
Thank you very much, sir. You mentioned one point very rightly that we can't deny it. We can't run away from it. We can delay the process, but sooner or later it's going to come across. And nowadays kids are super excited to try out new things. As you mentioned, we are thinking like 28th century. Probably the more you say no, the more they'll run after it. Exactly. Which, yes, which brings me to the next question. I was uh, uh, you know, going to ask to Priya, ma'am, which you know highlighted that, ma'am, how can chat GPT be effectively integrated into the curriculum to enhance the learning outcome? Yes. Uh, going by what the other panelists have said, uh, first and foremost, uh, we have to guess, okay, at all of the ways that AI will change the job market of the future. So preparing students for a world we can't even quite imagine first is a true challenge, okay? okay. And next important is training of teachers and second and third level of leadership in a very phased manner. This should be the focus of each of the schools. Mm -hmm. Now, coming to your question, how will it help students, right? So first and foremost, 24 by seven access to support and guidance, right? Second, personalized recommendations based on learning history. Then quick and accurate answers to questions. Uh, it's, uh, uh, you know, uh, it also improves time management skills, yes. okay? And then it increases the motivation, uh, engagement with learning. Importantly, it gives an access to a wide range of resources, okay? And it's, uh, it also is directly connected even with learning outcomes. So how... Uh, it uh, helps for study support, okay? And it will reduce the number of students who drop out of schools. It will also help to bridge the gap between student and educators, making it uh, easier for students to get the help they need to succeed. Absolutely, ma'am. You mentioned very clear one point nowadays, everybody, since you highlighted that, we cannot predict the future, right? How AI is unfolding. And I believe I was reading a news few uh, you know, months back where they were saying that humans are going to be replaced by the AI. So, yeah. you know, there will be no jobs left. I believe yeah. we all have read that, right? So where they were mentioning that all the human beings are going to be replaced, there will be no requirement for us to do the job. Though I relate that it's an add-on, it's in support. It cannot be the total replacement of what we are doing. Mm -hmm. That also highlights me to uh, the next point, as very rightly mentioned. The next question goes to Prerna Mitra, ma'am. Ma'am, as educator or as academician, as principal, what strategies do you believe will be most effective in preparing the students as well as teacher, as uh, ma'am has just mentioned, that teacher's training is also very important. We have to equip them with equal amount of importance to embrace and leverage AI throughout in the learning process. As we all are mentioning, we are all lifelong learners from the student side as well as the teacher side as well, ma'am. All right. Uh, thank you for this question. Uh, see, first of all, uh, we all know it is an inevitable change, uh, technology, AI, everything, it has to be integrated in our school curriculum. Uh, it is the need of the hour. Now, for that, uh, uh, first thing first is that we need to make all the stakeholders aware of what actually Chad GPT is. And uh, second thing is, if we talk about our teaching faculty, then the training, that is training, training, training based on how to use it effectively is a must. So in case, you know, if we are, uh, we think that, you know, we would uh, make our children access this chat GPT or AI driven chat GPT, then definitely they need to be made aware. They need to be trained by the teachers and before the teachers train the students, then I'm sure that teachers also, they need to be empowered. So it is necessary. Uh, next, uh, if we are talking about uh, integration of technology with related uh, certain topics are there, 
so we have to be very much specific you know it happens that we type something on chat gpt and we get a particular answer so it is the responsibility of the teacher and the other stakeholders who are mentoring these students that whatever the answers that is the command after the command whatever the uh, these reflections are there from chat gpt then it should be 100% accurate so the accuracy and also the reliability has to be validated by all the stakeholders and uh, then talking about that if we want to embrace this and leverage this technology then definitely personal supervision personal monitoring is necessary and lot of safety measures are required and uh, at times it happens you know that uh, 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 children are not aware of it that uh, uh, you know uh, their uh, these are encrypted ones or not and so that's the reason you know why certain algorithms and all that are used in ai uh then uh, it is a continuous process mm -hmm. it happens that if we are actually making our children adapt whether it is adapting personally as per the needs of the children then also we should be sure that they are in regular practice if they are accessing that particular mode of uh, communication and uh, last uh, but yes uh, as you have also said that um, human intervention is the need and we cannot totally rely on what the output will be from chat gpt and um, definitely uh, it is just a facilitator it's not the total replacement that's all thank you thank you ma'am so you mentioned two points over here which i which brings me to the next question and to our next panelist puna ma'am so the ma'am has spoken about two things uh, ma'am has spoken about that whatever comes so i'll not lie before i came to all of you to present i also went on to chat gpt i also searched about quick pointers and i got few suggestions right but overall what you get over here is not completely adequate for what you want you always have to customize you always have to plan you also have to make sure is it the exact thing what i want or not so ma'am my, my question to you here is how do we see the balance of benefits as well as the cons of uh, data privacy security we also talk about is this topic relevant for me as a student or as a educational institute so how do we deal with that ma'am first of all i will like to put on the table one point that came from uh, general sir that somewhere all of us have to put our um, our being a textbook bread generation aside okay and a moral compass aside before we even open our mind to what we are dealing with to me chat bots were happening for a longest longest time chat gpt is just a sophisticated uh, chat bot that is giving a high quality output okay now i am a very very uh, um, i believe in open book tests i genuinely believe i am not here to test the rote knowledge of a child to me knowledge a basic knowledge is like a calculator i would like to hand over the calculator to the child what i would want the child to know the way manan was saying that how personalized can i make my teaching and learning and how i can leverage this power of ai in to giving that power to the child to be able to achieve best of his potential so so ai in terms of say a adaptive testing and adaptive learning is fantastic so this disruption should be taken from a point of view that all of us adults have to change the rules our rules and how we teach how we learn in a classroom so imagine i've given a topic on environment or climate change and every child goes on chat gpt and prepares right he's going to read through it okay in his reading through it what he will not get from one self written note he might get a 
wonderful uh, you know documents which is rich right so when he goes to the class the teacher doesn't does not say submit your assignment teacher says present your assignment and justify it so the questions we ask need to change so teachers training is not about chat gpt but teachers training is how do i use it in my classroom yes. so i think the real paradigm shift or uh, in response to this disruption is we go and introspect into how do we train our teachers what is the expectation and what is the final goal of this whole activity that we call teaching and learning there should be deeper knowledge there should be ability to sort knowledge and be able to come up with solutions we just make them better thinkers otherwise they are more like a labor in a class learning by rote and reproduce what knowledge all, already has been created now when you get your created knowledge right in front of you your 25% of your time is used 75% is spent on creating new knowledge new questions so so i think chat gpt is a fantastic good quality disruption how we walk through this path is what we all work through the way archana was saying we create uh, frameworks not of how to uh, you shouldn't or should use chat gpt but how do we teach learn and leverage this one last small point i want to say uh, manan mentioned the uh, device divide i think that is also a barrier in our head for last 70 years we have been closing our eyes first of april going to a school buying a brand new bag and buying brand new books your device should start becoming the bag and the books should go beyond what is in the bag and then we all of us would have arrived and these disruptions we would have adopted so if there is any change is is us we have to change okay so this is my thing the security will happen great ma'am so you mentioned three very important point which i am taking away from this from this question for sure as device or uh, so you mentioned about over here that the the shift has to happen we always have a you know a mold which we have created for ourselves that this is how it should always be as you mentioned first of april we have a bag ready and we start going to school so that shift has to start from us right and as you also highlighted one point teachers training we have been talking about a lot we have been highlighting that how we have to empower them before we start talking about to the students we have to empower them at the base which also brings me to the next question to ekta ma'am over here so ma'am what role should a human supervision and guidance play when students use chat gpt in educational context in schools or in any other context when we provide them with this uh, you know superpower thank you so much apurva for asking this question um but before i answer and as we all have been discussing it that we have to embrace technology and we have to leverage ai in the classroom from the very moment these ai tools and specifically chat gpt came out every parent teacher student is curious about it and when we are visiting schools and we are interacting students are wondering can i use this for my homework teachers are wondering how do i adjust my classroom to this new technology parents are coming up with interesting questions from their children that am i allowed to use this in my classroom or not and school leaders as we all are discussing are wondering how do we react and adapt like it's moving so fast so first of all we need to pause for a moment and think 
what education is going to look like by 2030 and 2040. As Priya ma'am said, job market is changing. Prerna ma'am said, we need to make them aware. And Puna ma'am rightly said that we need to change the rules, right? So when we talk about chat GPT, let's accept it first that tools like chat GPT, they're not going anywhere. They are going to improve only. And when students use these tools, human supervision and teacher intervention is very, very critical. First and foremost, we should teach them ethical and responsible use of these resources, these tools. We should create a safe space for our students so that they can feel comfortable when they're exploring these AI powered tools. Now it's not important, uh, like as Manan said, said, it's not, necessary that those tools will be used in the school. Those tools will be used after school only, right? So as teachers and parents, we should learn all this so that we can help them and guide them. And instead of restraining them and telling them not to use, we should probably start making it part of our integration uh, of our curriculum and start telling them how to use it. Like I'll just take an example. When automobiles were on the road and the first car crash happened, did we ban it? Did we stop it? We never, right? So we adopted speed limits, safety standards. We said, okay, let's change the traffic rules. Let's bring licensing requirements and all. As one of also said that we need to change our rules, right? So students are going to use these tools. We cannot, and I believe we should not stop them. There have to be certain adjustments. And for those adjustments, we need to train and empower our teachers. We need to train and empower our students. And when we talk about uh, empowering our teachers, we need to tell them, as one of the panelists said, that there are so many tools. We need to tell them to learn, to understand these tools. Identify which one of all these tools is appropriate for your subject for the grade that you're teaching, whether that tool is appropriate for the child that we are teaching them, and then incorporate those tools in the classroom. One way is, yes, NEP has already said that, okay, we should have AI and we should have uh, coding in our classrooms. That's one way of doing it. We can also incorporate that in our curriculum is what I'll say. So teachers training and empowering students also is very, very important and critical. And I would say that I think teachers are the best ones to guide the students yeah. in this strange new world that we have. Thank you so much. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, very rightly mentioned about that, you know, the hierarchy follows through the same. So we have to start first from the start as if all the leaders are over here. Uh, they're saying that they are making changes at every step that they are trying to root out, right? They're also helping teachers. They're also helping students. Small, small steps we are taking to make the big change there. Which brings me to the question and, of course, the value pointer which you mentioned, that either they are going to do it in the class, as uh, Manan so mentioned earlier in the personalization, or they will do it after the class. We cannot hold them back there, right? Now, my question which brings, so ma'am, uh, to Archana ma'am it is, ma'am, chat GPT is a valuable tool for, addition, you know, as an education, as an addition for our own learning. So how do you see that, do you think is it killing somewhere the critical thinking uh, of the student or creative thinking of the student? Do you really feel that, ma'am? Um, see, uh... As we've all said, and we all understand that it is a tool. So it's like a knife. You can use it to chop vegetables and prepare a good salad, healthy salad, or you can kill somebody. So everything is like that. Uh, we can use it to enhance critical thinking, or it can also uh, kind of kill your critical thinking. As Poonam very rightly said, it is how we make the children use it how teachers use it to create that atmosphere where the child may bring a ready-made answer, but then you make the child think about it, make a question the child in such a way that the child is forced to analyze that ready-made answer that the child has got from chat GPT. Yes. And I think together the teacher and the students 
can sit, they can discuss or critique that answer. Do you think it is because chat GPT is also not accurate? It is not the final yeah. word on everything mm -hmm. that the children need to understand. So you get a ready-made answer, that's fine. But then is it right? Or can you enhance that answer by adding your own thinking, analytical skills, mm -hmm. and very importantly, your observations? So said the same thing for critical thinking, for creativity for originality, for everything. It is, again, chat GPT just provides you with some content. What do you do with that content yeah. is the important thing. Mm -hmm. What does the teacher do with that content? How the child takes it, how the child analyzes it, uses it, and then keeps it or discards it. Mm -hmm. So the main thing I feel is how we use chat GPT is the most important thing. We are all going to use it. There is no question of banning it, which was the initial reaction in some countries. There is uh, no question of, you know, whether we have it in school or after school or home. It is, it'll be there. It is there. How we use it and how we navigate ourselves around it, how we reimagine our teaching methodologies and Again, coming to what Poonam says, very, very important, teacher training on how to ask the right questions, how to get the children, the creativity of, out of the children. Let's not kill the creativity. Let's enhance it, enhance it with the help of ChatGPT. Thank you. Great. Thank you very much, ma'am. Uh, you highlighted one very important point is how are we reimagining our classrooms uh, which is inbuilt with AI-based learning, right? So my question, I would like all of you to contribute to this question, though I'll start first with Jiral, sir. That's a how do you reimagine, right? When I was in school, I know there is a blackboard or whiteboard is there in my class where a teacher is going to come and talk or teach about it. Now it has changed. Now there is a smart board. Uh, there are visual representation happening on the board and interaction is very different from earlier how it used to be. And I'm sure coming down next 10 years, the classrooms will again look very different. So how do you uh, reimagine that? If you can share some insights about that. Yes, yeah, sure. Um, so previously, when we wanted to understand, you know, the child-centered education and all that, we, we started off with something called differentiated instruction. And then it went on to uh, also inclusive education. And then it, it was like subject-integrated uh, methodologies and different things we have tried. And, uh, you know, out of my own experience, what finally stands good is um, the self-learning methodology. And that is what is going to uh, be the right way of learning. And I think the tools from AI, right? uh, you know, the ch chat, GPT or whatever it may be, you know, they all address this self-learning, um, you know, um, uh, issues that children have. Because most of the time, knowingly or unknowingly, the teachers and the schools don't allow children to learn on their own. Most of the time, we try to impose, we try to insist that this is the way to learn. But it is not so because uh, every child is unique. Every child has uh, his or her own way of uh, learning. That has to be identified. I think tools like ChatGPT is, is going to help them uh, with this uh, self-learning um, uh, methodology so that they learn perfectly uh, in, the, in, this, in the phase in which they would like to uh, learn uh, learn a concept. And that, that is how this, this is going to transform the classroom as well. I think the attitude of the schools must change now. In fact, um, uh, even the classrooms will not be necessary in these yeah. cases. I'm, I'm talking about, you know, I'm talking to the extreme maybe. 20 but years that down is, the line. 20 yeah, years that down is the what line. is going to, definitely that is what is going to happen. And I think we need to accept the fact that this we are in this era and we need to understand this way. And uh, to, 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 to tell my own experience, like I've already asked my teachers to start using the 
chat gpt at least to submit their lesson plans and uh, they have already started doing it and they are able to uh, you know learn from their own experience and they are able to identify their you know the 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 uh, very outcome of the chat gpt answers they get and the, the replies that they get and uh, uh, to be very frank uh, uh, when i started you know when i wanted to talk something in this uh, in this uh, discussion i i in fact took help from chat gpt i wanted a powerpoint presentation made by chat gpt and it gave me a very nice presentation unfortunately i am not able to tell all that because i have to answer your question <laughs> otherwise it has already given me the presentation that i had to you know deliver today because i, I some and and as ma'am said you know uh, how as archana ma'am said how how are we going to approach it that is what is going to make the big difference okay uh, sometimes it, if it is going to be used just as a copycat tool then then it's of no use it, it has to be uh, critically analyzed even after you get something out of it you need to analyze you need to critically think you need to put your mind into it and then verify for the accuracy of that and um, one more point i maybe i will not get time later that's why i want to add this also <laughs> maybe um, we need to contextualize maybe somebody from india also should develop a chat gpt for indians so it it would be more suitable it would be you know uh, you know most more, more appropriate for us to use and so that the errors may be uh, less it will be contextualized it will be you know appropriate it will be ethical sir, sir that is that will happen naturally by the nature of ai more exactly. you use more yes. you contextualize yeah it takes input from us you never you never you never know extra marks might do that also yeah. exactly so so what i wanted to tell you two things in this if i can uh, uh, interrupt apurva please ma'am uh, so the challenge here is that uh, ai uh, uh, is not a thing ai is some total of human mind Correct. it is mining human mind so first thing in lesson plan that throw ai throws up is the best practices of the world international curriculum for the longest time is using a framework indian curriculum is not using a framework when you ask for a framework that is the framework that pops but that's a framework what you populate that framework would be indigenous knowledge but you picked a best practice then you tweak it and in some time because indian population is the largest that we are going to drive the best practices if we use this tool so i think this turns out to be a collective wisdom that will go out to the world using the ai but that ai will happen through use It's point number two, very important point, and today I think that point is being fulfilled by AI. When we got into digital learning, about uh, fifteen years ago, already there were certain uh, organizations there, and and there was a glamour around digital learning, right? There was that awe around digital learning. End of the day, that was a very smart. a uh, teaching aid that was used in the classroom but that time what we thought that whether today or 100 years ago the objective of a teacher in a classroom is exactly the same that my learner should understand and he should be equipped to use it as a citizen right that hasn't changed as much as technology you bring that remains second point is can he apply the knowledge right indian curriculum does not allow application international curriculum encourages application so so what we um, uh, i think the framework when it will come it will kind of take the uh, fundamental knowledge at the minimum basic foundational knowledge and actually make your classroom use a framework which is more application oriented so so i i your point of how will we do it it will a happen organically and then as school leaders we have to do it purposefully yes. Th those two things will converge eventually 
Uh, I believe Prerna ma'am uh, wants to share something over the same context. <laughs> thank you, Puna ma'am. Yeah, uh, thank you. Uh, actually, um, uh, though I uh, was imagining something, you talked about you know reimagining our classroom in this uh, time when Chat GPT is there. So you know, obviously, we know that with so many advanced technological concepts coming in and. Uh, so many inputs by the leaders over here and uh, what Ar Archana ma'am said that definitely extra marks uh, uh, you never know can be a pioneer in uh, including you know what I feel is like immersive virtual reality that is the concept wherein you know we can imagine that particular topic which the teacher has to teach so she will create that particular you know real life situation in the classroom where the entire classroom will appear to be like that particular theme that the teacher has to teach. So somehow, you know, if we, if we are teaching something, uh, a farming in geography or SST. So I think that the, the uh, students should be getting that entire, you know, experience, the virtual experience of a farmland where the students are already sitting. So, you know, this kind of reimagining what I could see that it may come up, you never know. Yeah, yeah. So this is just an idea I wanted to share. <laughs> sure. Thank you very much, ma'am. Uh, when Poona ma'am was sharing the idea that first we have to make sure we are doing step by step creating a framework for our Indian education system. And second, she mentioned about that we have to do purposefully, right? So I saw Manan sir, you know, was thinking, I could see something on his face that he was thinking about certain pointers. So Manan sir, would you like to add some points over that? Uh, it is so... Uh... Uh, interesting that um, the same discussion we had when smart boards were uh, evolved and um, when we thought so so smart boards of course we the management had to put it purposefully in the classroom now the second point is how do teachers really use it you know organically or purposefully so <laughs> we just put extra marks or some, one such content a lot we adapted uh, smart boards when extra marks was not around so uh, we thought that teachers will make their PPT, will use the projector, will use the touch screen, will use amazing internet facility. Like, you know, YouTube did not have so much content back then, but yeah. uh, we'll use that. Uh, it didn't happen as organically as we wished it should happen. We gave everything to them. We gave internet, we gave smartphone, we gave them laptops. Um, as our school, we we back uh, then in 2009, we gave them laptops, but it was so difficult for him to adapt to it. And they were uh, chalk and talk was the uh, you know uh, was the most convenient. And they yeah. said that uh, this um, technology is not helping us. Uh, I used to at this wasting our time in uh, the short period time we have. We have to set up everything, and at times it doesn't work. And because we uh, spoil it, it will damage. There was so much resistance, you know. So what we did was purposefully we had to do training. We had to uh, motivate, uh, you know, uh, new success stories like teachers who actually did. Then we had to monitor them. Um, I remember we had initially we had to keep an IT support person for each uh, class where the teacher was going to use the smart. You know, so teacher would say that today I'm going to teach the solar system. I have to show this video. Please, uh, I request the IT support person to be there so that my period doesn't go waste. So we did all that. Now uh, teachers are supporting themselves and it is, a, the a hardware is much more reliable. Now we have that interactive panel, which is you press a button and it works. And uh, there is no, you know, no wires around and extra smart, extra marks. Software has been very convenient to just put some, click some buttons and it's there. So my point is that, yes, now it is organic. Now teachers tell us that this is a wonderful thing and thanks for giving us the best technology. Our work is so easy. So yes, managements have to, uh, you know, a little bit too purposefully. Once uh, we have, you know, brought the food on the table, on the plate, teachers will eat themselves. You don't have to spoon feed them. 
very rightly mentioned manan sir so there there was there was one point which got uh, me very much you know into the th- thought that you mentioned that when we started off with the smart boards also you have to nurture the teachers as well parallelly right so there are different variety of teachers that you get there are certain who are super excited to hop on to this uh, you know pathway of exploring chat gpt and there will be certain uh, teachers who are little hesitant of ch- towards the change which is coming across so uh, priya ma'am my question this to you how do we deal with both the set of uh, teachers that we have because the ones who are excited you need not to tell them that you have to go and explore they will be doing on their own everything is available at fingertips though there are few you have to sit as so mentioned you need not to spoon feed but i believe there are certain teachers you have to make them sit that okay this is the necessity we have to work along with it so what's your take on that ma'am uh ma'am you are on mute right now yes so uh, yes there will be two sets of teachers yes one who is you know extra uh, you know good in using technology and there will be another group of teachers who you know are you know whatever may be the reason they are not so good in using or leveraging technology so what is the best way as a leader an institutional leader you know the motivation is the key to success you know uh, uh, sit with them you know it's not exactly spoon feeding you know it's not spoon feeding but if you want them to use it in the long run we should find a way for them to use it you know it could be uh, kind words uh, you know uh, you know uh, telling them giving them uh, or uh, uh, telling them the importance of this uh, technology in long run how it would how they will stay relevant in their jobs see it's also very important you just cannot uh, use a textbook or you cannot just uh, use things which are redundant as well so staying relevant is also very important and uh, you know uh, tell uh, highlight to them the benefits of transforming the way uh, students learn making it personalized engaging accessible for everyone okay most important you should also tell them about the potential drawbacks such as content overload fake news lack of critical uh, thinking skills see uh, we have seen both success stories we have seen caution cautionary tales about the use of ai which underscores the uh, importance of implementing it responsibly okay this means being transparent of how algorithms are used protecting student uh, privacy and using ai in a way that fosters creativity and innovation so the educational revolution that uh, ai promises is an exciting prospect but we need to just be aware of the challenges and address them head on this is my speech yes ekta ma'am please i just like to add one point what priya ma'am rightly said that we have to tell them that it is relevant in their day to day work so we don't have to stop them in using it in the schools every workplace nowadays is asking their workers or workforce figure out how can you use these ai tools how can you use chat gpt to make your work can you reduce your time can you come up with more creative ideas with this so but there are at the same time there are schools and teachers who are worried about using it and they are considering it as cheating so the cheating that we are trying to stop in the schools is what employers want them to do actually right so children will have to use ai when they go to work so we should probably this is the right time we should start training them on who use how to use it responsibly and the real issue here is not that we have to view this technology as one of the cheating tools rather as all of us we have been discussing how do we teach creativity how do we teach communication skills problem solving skills and enhance their technological influence with this basically is how we should be considering it absolutely you know end of the day it is our own moral compass we uh, shift it 
and 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 we but a lot of people talk to me and say that oh if you're doing so much innovation we have so much ai in our assessments we have adaptive learning and all then there is no use for a teacher right or 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 a school yes. for that yes. matter but i i very strongly feel what as adults we bring on the table is wisdom and and how the children uh, that the people who are in our care can can be safe and they should fly but they should be safe that should be a thing so we need to be educated but for any any change we have to learn to adopt it and adapt to it so the concern that was uh, shared everywhere was um, like manan said i gave everything but there was no motivation to do it because it was like a burden so the point was she was in her discomfort so how what do we do that we bring things to them challenge them but make them comfortable when you challenge somebody and leave them so fear takes over so so what is a model that we use for that so it it, it always uh, reminds me of a kabir doha i don't even know if i will remember it uh, but i'm going to do cheating okay so chat gpt <laughs> guru kumhar shish kumb hai ghadi ghadi kaade khot andar haath sahar ke bahar bahe chot that he is like a potter and when he is uh, shaping the pot he hits it from top to take out all its uh, you know uh, things that he has to smoothen but always has a hand inside so that the pot does not break so this usually is a guru shishya but i think today as uh, school leaders it is for your teachers they are the ones uh, your children are born into technology your true learners are the teachers you have to challenge them but there has to be a hand inside that makes them feel safe so i'm closing with one example so um around uh, in 2007 the same time that manan was talking about we had one principal in rosary convent i still remember 2008 i think everybody was taking two three smart boards he said 40 full school has to go i don't want to do anything peace me we went all 40 on a kind of resistance that came from the teachers so what he would do is morning 11 o'clock walk the corridors just to see if everybody was using it okay and there was a 60 uh, uh, year old teacher who was going to retire in four uh, months and she said i am not touching it i am retiring in 4 months so he said but you're taking away 4 months of my child's life so if you're here for 4 months you will teach for 4 months and i met her him after 6 months of all that and all and he tells me that when the teacher retired in her retirement speech she said why did you not bring it before so what my deal is that is but the hand is that he use mentors in the school all the young teachers who were very enthu about it he made sure they went as assistant teachers in her class so so it's how to implement yes and you can't bring it and sit back and say oh i wish they use it they, you have to take it there's a huge responsibility so so i i think all of you have done that in so many ways and and that is the leadership that chat gpt is ai so so there's no it's just a representation like search was for detergent so yes. it's like that so so how we use it is the power comes from that wonderful example ma'am you have given and as you mentioned that chat gpt is just an uh, tip of an iceberg what we see there is a lot which is under the sea so prerna ma'am i uh, you know i just saw that she has commented on the same so i like to uh, have this question from you ma'am 
So what all other sort of motivation do you think just ma'am has given example of last four months and how it changed uh, ma'am's life, right? So what other motivation do you think we can incorporate in day-to-day -day teacher's life so that they move ahead with the AI as an add-on to them? Uh, all right. <laughs> Uh, so this question, what I, it is really a marvelous example uh, Puna ma'am has given. Uh, you know, th uh, two days back I was in class nine, and uh, it was just uh, the teacher had not come to the class. So I thought, let me just speak to the children. So I asked them, how many of you are using Chat GPT? So approx 40 percent of the students they raised their hands. So I asked them, uh, okay, you have started using it? I, they said yes, ma'am. So I said, what, uh, what things are you not typing when you want to uh, infer any answer? So they said, okay, ma'am, uh, we want to write essays. You know, we want to know a particular formula for any mathematical solution. So we definitely, you know, we write it and we get the exact solution. Then further I asked them, Manika, uh, do you uh, get the exact answer? Like in mathematics, usually, you know, we need step-by-step -step solution. They said, yes, ma'am. And even, you know, there is always added on to those step-by-step -step solution, the examples, plus they also support it with the explanation that what is the explanation behind that particular step-by-step -step solution. So it was really amazing to hear such answers. So my point is that then later on, I thought I asked the other students, when are you going to browse uh, chat GPT? When are you going to uh, take that help? So they said, okay, ma'am, uh, we are still hesitant. Uh, because at times it happens that what we are learning from the books, it doesn't align with what answers we get from chat GPT. So I, it was fairly okay. So I just did not respond anything. I came back to my office and then I thought that is it uh, fine that, you know, if that particular age group children are asked to find out certain specific answer, which is not related to the age, because one of my boarder, he came to me and he said, ma'am, I want to start investing in shares. So I asked the child that, what are you doing? He said, okay, ma'am, can I browse in chat GPT? I said, is it this your age? So the conclusion is that whenever it is being used, this particular tool is being used, teachers and the elders, mentors, they have to make sure that it is age appropriate. Yeah. We are there to uh, guide these children that this is not the right time. Time according to the time only they should uh, just uh, surface these kind of tools and make the best use of it so i'm sure that the same thing goes what uh, archana ma'am has said that it's just how we are applying knife in what context so uh, this is very important and lately you know um, no, yesterday, I suppose, Juk Suraya article, I was just reading this and he spoke about that is AI, AIO. So, you know, the last line, which is having a tickling humor in it, uh, if you permit, I may read it. Yeah, out. Yeah, yeah, yes, please. yes, please, ma'am. Yeah, so it says that, uh, you know, AI will become all our powerful deity to whom we shall offer a daily heartfelt prayer. <laughs> so, and in the end, it is written, our Ram, R-A-M, which actually is Ram, our ram which is in cyberspace preserved in your domain for yours is the algorithm the rom rom and the software forever and always amen amen means a i m e n so this was so uh, tickling that you know i thought uh, while you know i was browsing certain matter for this uh, panel discussion i thought i'll definitely carry this excerpt <laughs> of uh, Suraya and uh, just bring it forward. So these, uh, the only in the end, I would like to say that we have to establish smart goals. If we want that yeah. our stakeholders should execute and apply this chat GPT in the school through AI. So the goals have to be smart. S means it has to be specific. We need to understand that where we are going, it has to be measurable. We need to have a particular portion identified well beforehand if we want to break it into chunks. And it has to be attainable. It is not that, you know, we just want everything we should, we go, should go, go ahead in one go. So that is not the uh, thing. And it should be realistic. You know, children are living in this world of fantasy. And they can imagine anything and we cannot just push them towards that end where we, I think that, you know, uh, it may land into trouble for them. And it should be time bound. 
that is of course we have to start at the micro level and then gradually we want to expand it we have to try it in shorter period of time to start with and gradually you know if we think that it is becoming successful and responsibility lies in each and every individual's hand that's very important how we have to protect it how we have to execute it it lies on uh, it all lies within us so this was all from my side and since uh, i know we will be winding up uh, just a pondering thought uh, by uh, i have just written by cian gerity he says that the technology we use impresses no one the experience that we create with it is everything thank you absolutely so much. absolutely absolutely uh, 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 you know the, the this whole discussion today was around chat gpt just to challenge each other that how do we respond to change but the principle remains the same that web comes to our care should be um should have a strong foundational uh, knowledge and should be equipped to live as a contributing citizen so so i think beyond the glamour of chat gpt actually leveraging ai in assessment is very 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 critical part of the school system because we have to create that sieve to know what is the learning level of every child and be able to give personalized learning like everybody manan jeral everybody is talking about can i contribute to the uniqueness of a child if i cannot hear a child in a class of 40 or a school of 2000 ai allows me to listen to the child and and respond to him in time within the framework of school timetables and the time in the school so the point that we're discussing today is how do we effectively use ai in teaching and learning and not get overwhelmed with ever evolving technology and then don't start with a no the point is we don't start with the no we start with the how very important point ma'am you mentioned that before we start we always have a hesitation that how which will be uh, you know what if i'm not able to do what if it doesn't turn out the way i want so you very rightly mentioned that how should be the question that how are we able to integrate how are we able to make the best use of the same so uh, we are almost at the verge of wrapping up the session 5 minutes max uh, panelists i will request 5 to 10 minutes i'll be taking more so to all the attendees to all the participants the uh, q and a round is open for all you can put your questions in the chat before we move ahead for the last question please feel free to po post your questions regarding the topic relevant now my last question to all right so what is that one piece of advice would you like to give to the teachers to the educators or to the students who are attending the session right now with us we will be starting with uh, archana ma'am uh, um i think uh, what i would advise is that we always keep talking of content and knowledge and uh, in our general education system also we talk of books getting information from here and there like information overload and knowledge but somehow we need to start uh, focusing more on the processing of that knowledge to reach what kunam very rightly said at some point to reach a wisdom to understand so knowledge now is available so easily internet chat gpt all this thing everything knowledge it's all knowledge but then how do you uh, make the children use that knowledge for the right thing so application understanding analysis the whole processing we need to focus more on the processing part of it where you get that knowledge from is now irrelevant you get it from Ch chat gpt or from google or from wikipedia whatever but it is the discretion that the 
that all of us as teachers, educators, principals, all of us have to use as to how we use that knowledge further or how we um, use it to uh, go to a higher level of wisdom and understanding to become, to basically use the word what you all are using to elevate ourselves on a higher platform of intelligence. Thank Absolutely, you. Absolutely, ma'am. Thank you very much. We'll go with Manan, sir. Uh, sir, you are not audible, not very clear. Now, am I clear? Yes, sir. Um, I think teachers should, uh, first of all, those who are still not tech savvy should uh, embrace technology and start using it. Uh, that is, uh, like AI is a built up on that. So they need to first be using whatever tools and technology that's already available with them. And secondly, is to uh, not take it as a burden, it is a help. So welcome it with both hands. That would be my. Absolutely. Thank you very much, sir. Uh, I'll be moving on to uh, Jural, sir. Yes, ma'am. Um, so enough is said. Um, the thing is that when we start using a technology, we first of all need to understand how technology works. Because it, that will help us a lot. And uh, for example, when I started uh, learning about chat GPT, the first question I asked on the web was what chat GPT cannot do and what it can do, right? So when I when I look at both sides, I'm able to critically, you know, understand how this chat GPT is going to work. So every time when I get a reply from the chat GPT, I will have to once again verify whether, you know, it, it is giving the right one or the, the, the you know, not the acceptable one. So th this kind of, you know, critical thinking would, would should be applied. And one more thing to encourage teachers to motivate teachers uh, uh, and children also uh, to to learn this technology and all that. One one uh, uh, very good example would be like today morning also I asked a teacher how to generate a PPT using ChatGPT, and the teacher was very happy to explain that to me. And I think that was a very uh, motivating factor for the teacher because the teacher is going to once again do something more in it and he or she is going to come to me, come back to me with, you know, other details. So I think learning from them, it is going to be one of the very important motivational activity that as leaders we must do. Thank you. Sure, sir. Thank you very much. Uh, Priya, ma'am, what is your one piece of advice for the educators? Ma'am, you're on mute. So yes. the responsibility does not solely fall on educators' shoulders. So I feel that as a society, we must recognize the potential risks associated with the widespread use of AI language models and take steps to mitigate those risks. Okay, that is one very important thing. And this may also involve developing guidelines and best practices for the ethical use of AI in education, as well as investing in research to better understand the long-term impact of AI on critical thinking and independent learning. Wonderful, ma'am. Thank you very much. Uh, moving on to Puna, ma'am. Ma'am, what is your advice to all the educators? Very base level advice that whatever tools you have, Never use them piecemeal, whatever already you have, because I feel whatever they already have, they are not using completely. You should create a technology driven ecosystem to actually see the impact of that in learning. So complete ecosystem of learning from home to school, empowering students, with the self-test, self-learning tools, and you see the magic that happens in the class, the conversations that happen in the class. Real application is learned when everybody comes to a level of understanding of base concept, and then they start discussing it. So, so that is only possible when there is a 100% 
usage of the tools you have already bought. And then you start seeing that how effectively your class may be enhanced. So you can't say, I want two of this and 10 of that and 15 of that and let me have a great class. Whatever you have, absolutely leverage that and then show the roadways of how we leverage rest. So that is my input. Nothing peace me. It's total. Absolutely, ma'am. Thank you very much for your advice. Then we'll move to Ekta, ma'am. Ma'am, what is your one piece of advice? Um, the only thing that I'll say is it is the most transformative innovation that we are seeing. And every time there's something new which comes, it brings certain challenges, which we understand they're real, but they're all manageable. We have done it earlier. We will be able to do it again here now. And don't fear these tools, educators. Make them your friend. Chat GPT and other AI tools are not going to replace those because we play a very, very important role in fostering social skills, emotional intelligence, and empathy in students. So be fearless, make them your friend, and make maximum use of them. I think we all have to actually accept that AI is you. Correct. AI is logging into your mind. And if you have a brilliant idea, AI is going to capture and take it to the world. So, so use, 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 use to have your uniqueness embedded in AI. Absolutely, ma'am very rightly mentioned about all the one piece of advice. I think I'm going to take it back and share it with other of my friends as well to understand to all the educators as well. So just to recap the few of the pointers which have been the you know conversational talk for today. First and the foremost, discussing about the transformative impact of how chat GPT is just one segment of it and how it is changing on day-to-day -day basis first, not fearing it, and befriending them. That's my first piece, which I have taken aback from this. Second, highlighting the role of chat GPT in enabling personalized learning path. As Mananza very rightly mentioned in the starting, that how every student, every teacher is unique in its own way and how they follow their path of learning, it's very different from each other, right? That's the second point which I'll be having through. Third, focusing on how AI-driven tools can facilitate better communication and collaboration between teachers and students. As Poonam ma mentioned about a case study, now the question is always about how. The moment we start discussing about how more options, more interactives, more ideas will come across the table, that students will also think that learning is happening both the sidewise. That's my third point. Coming towards the next point, delving into potential challenges and ethical consideration while integrating AI into education. As Priya may mentioned, a framework needs to be created. The guidelines needs to be created that what works, what are the no's, and as mentioned, moral values of ours that how are we going to lead from our side? What works? For us, wonderful. Could be there, there are certain things works for one school, certain things doesn't work. So how are we customizing it at our level also plays a very crucial role. Last but not the least, envisioning how chat GPT and other similar technologies will shape the future of learning. Now, as Ekta I mentioned, we can't run away from it, right? It's a part of our life. So the sooner we accept, the sooner we try incorporating into day-to-day -day life, it's going to help us at the core level to strengthen the way our education is looking up right now. And you never know, I am doing fingers crossed, that very soon we are going to come across as extra marks something to bring across this valuable insights for all these schools who are incorporated with us. Now, Bringing across, since this was the last point, I would like to thank all the panelists. We are very, very grateful for all of you for sharing your thoughts to me, to all the panelists and the participants who are here. 
I am sure there are a few of the participants who have put out their questions as well, which we were not able to answer. I am 110% sure we'll be getting back to you with all the questions along with the answers. Wonderful thank you to Una ma'am, Priya ma'am, Manan sir, Jural sir, Archana ma'am, Ekta ma'am for all your wonderful insights. It was a great discussion, a great session from valuable insights where we shared with the ideas. We look forward to seeing all of you again. We hope to see you very, very soon. Do share the feedback of this particular session. The people who have attended are very thankful to all of them. We will be conducting upcoming webinar series as well. Do follow along with us. You can go to www.extramarks.com. You can also search about www.extramarks.com slash EM Elevate to follow us for more upcoming sessions. The attendees who participated in this, you will be receiving a certification from our side. Stay tuned with us on our website for the recording of this webinar and upcoming session. So a wonderful thank you. We are grateful to have all of you. Thank you very much to all the panelists. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. 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 Thank you.